Hello and welcome to this week's watercolour lesson. Now this week it's been really foggy and I thought it'd be a really quite interesting exercise to have a go at trying to show that misty atmosphere in a watercolour picture. To that end I put together this exercise that I think you're really going to enjoy. It's quite simple but it's really quite a test for your watercolour skills. Here it is. Basically, it's a very, very simple landscape, but you can see that it's made up of soft and hard edges with the mist being down in the, the valleys between the mountains. The hard edges are made by painting wet paint onto dry paper, and the soft edges are made by either painting into previously dampened paper or indeed using a damp brush to soften off the active paint. Let me show you what I mean. Right, now this picture is our first experiment with hard and soft edges and you can see we've got quite moody sky and this is a hard edge so it needs to be wet paint on a dry background. It's slightly softer here so we can use the damp brush to soften the edges and a lot, lot softer here. That needs to dry and then we can keep building up the hard edges against the soft edges. Let me show you. Let's start off with the sky first. Now I'm using just um, Payne's Grey um, as an example. I suggest you do this a few times. So do it with Payne's Grey first and then you don't have to think about colour. And then subsequently you might want to have a go with something a little bit more moody, maybe some purple, something like that to to make it slightly more interesting. But we're going to start off just with a greyish sky. Um, sometimes I wet the paper first, sometimes I don't, but because we're talking about the sky, um, it can have a lot of movement in it, so I'm quite happy to add more colour, move it around a bit, and not worry about marks that I might, might make. But it's a bit darker here at the top. And of course it's all going to dry a lot lighter, so do do bear that in, in mind. So that's our bit of a moody sky. We don't have to worry too much about how it ends at the bottom half of it, because you can see that this um, the silhouette of the mountain goes over the top of it. So as long as we don't have anything too hard, we don't need to to worry too much. Um, a little bit of tissue paper here so we'll have have it a little bit lighter here and then maybe one or two clouds something like that. So that's our moody sky to start off with maybe soften it just a little bit here. And then leave it alone to dry. Right, now this is our sky. That's nice and dry because what we're going to do next is this line. And as you can see, this line is a hard line here, but it's soft at the, bo uh, at the bottom. It sort of dissipates as it gets down here and there's other stuff going on. Now you can do this one of two ways. Either you can um, paint on dry paper or you can put a little bit of wet on. Let me show you. Um, it'll go sort of along here. You notice I haven't done any drawing because sometimes pencil lines can really get in the way and look a bit clunky. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of water down here. Not there because that's where the, the line is going to go. So we want quite strong paint. Payne's grey again and we'll go from, it comes up right from the top here, so we'll do a little bit of a wobbly line. We can go back and do some more, something like that. Then down to here, around here, and then it disappears to nothing. Um, that's the start of your hard line, but you can put quite, quite a lot of paint on, maybe that's a bit too, there, but keep an eye on this because you don't want that to set hard 
and here you want it to go really really soft so I prefer to go on wet paper now and just soften it up like this you can always go back in and do some more um, which works for me alternatively as I said you can paint down into the wet wet area all right so here there's a sort of line occurring that we don't want make sure you've got a piece of tissue in your hand at all time because sometimes you want to go back in but you don't want too much paint on um, I think I'll take a little bit more dark around the corner here and let it drop down it all helps if you've got a slight incline on your hoverboard that's at an angle which would work quite well Right, soften the edge off a little bit. That's into that that wet area that I put on earlier. Keep an eye. It is a bit like spinning plates. Keep an eye on it because as it as it dries, there might be some hard edges which we which we don't want. And then this is disappearing into nothing. There's there's some tonal value there, but no hard edge. So can you see it sort of? disappears into nothing there. The next bit we're going to do is this. So this area we want a, that sort of misty look but no hard edges. So here it's sort of quite quite cloudy. Darkish here. We'll have the tree there. Don't worry about the bits lower down because obviously we're going to have a darker, um, a darker uh, glaze over the top that will cover all of that stuff. So, but just think about how it's how it's drying and what it looks like. Okay. I think I'm actually going to want it a little bit darker. Actually, I'm going to drop in. A little bit of darker paint at various points along the way because I quite like the look of it it makes it a little bit more a little bit more dramatic but not too dark as it gets down to the bottom damp brush again and you can see that it it moves around quite nicely but always always look at that see that if I left that now that would dry as quite a hard edge so I want to just soften it up so it disappears into almost nothing now we can make some marks here because this again is um, it's sort of cloudy down there so you can make the edges quite you can break into them a little bit to give the idea of clouds. I think maybe we could have a little bit more pigment there as well. So a little bit of moodiness down, down there. But just, it's a very, very simple picture. But the idea is that you can have an idea of control over the top. Yeah? Right, now leave that to dry. Um, it sort of helps if you can stay in the room, actually. If you go away, sometimes you can be quite horrified as to what might happen in your absence. <laughs> so keep an eye on it. And then if it, you do start to get some hard edges that you don't want, you can just pull them out. But don't poke and prod. Right, let's let that dry again. Right, we can see that's dried quite nicely now. Um, what we want to do is do the middle bit. So that's coming out of the mist. We've got some um, a, a hard line here against the soft background that we've already made, but it's soft again at the bottom. So what we need to do is we'll put a little bit of wet on here just to soften it up. Coming from this direction. And then we're going to go down here. So quite a 
quite a lot of paint. I think I'll start about here in the middle where it's dry and then I can get an idea on the sort of edge that I want. There's a sort of tree thing going on here. I might do that later actually, we'll see. up into the wet wet area. Deal with this first down down here. And this is quite sort of cloudy so Let's see if we'll maybe do a bit of that, a little bit of this. Now there's a bit more pigment down there, so a little bit more. I'll leave that for a little minute there just to dry off a bit because I think I want a slightly sharper, sharper edge there. But all the while, as you're going along, you need to decide whether you want a hard or a soft edge. Now, what I do want is more pigment um, because that's quite dark there in the middle. So I'll put a bit more pigment in um, and see how it settles. little sort of silhouette things going on there and something that looks a bit like a bit like trees or in that far distance but this is it's a sort of fantasy picture really so um, you know go with it because really it's all about brush control and understanding how the medium of watercolor works so what's most important. That will go up into there, but I will leave it just a little minute. Um, I think in this case I will take it down to the bottom here. Now this bit here is coming up this side. Um, so this hard line that's been left there, that won't be a problem at all because that won't be seen. Um, I think I will lighten it a little bit here because we've got some very low very low cloud here and just in case I want uh, there's this little one here isn't there and then here and then this goes over the top again so I'll yeah I might pull a bit more cloud out here and of course you see if you leave this line soft and you don't wear uh, make any mistakes basically you can choose where you want this and I think my four well the closest part is not really foreground is it but the closest darkest part i want sort of down here really not taking up as much as it is there so we'll have another little bit there another bit here and then this will be the darkest going up there right leave it to dry again so what we're going to do is use paint that's barely darker than the background but just enough so it's just coming through the mist so I'm going to start from maybe a little more pigment I'm going to start from here and put this wobbly line in there like that because it's a hard edge on that side but not on the other maybe a little darker It 
should do it right now. At the bottom side, we want it to disappear to nothing. So make sure you have some water on that. If there's too much water, make sure you take it away. I might tidy it up just a little bit. Right, do the bit down the bottom. Once again, hard to, they are mostly trees, so I think what I will do is I'll put the hill in first and then I'll get myself a nice little brush to do the silhouettes of the trees along there. So hard edge there. We don't need to worry about here because we're going to have another big mountain there. But it is quite dark here, but quite textured as well. So I'll do a little bit of a scribble to get a bit of texture in there, I think. <laughs> have a look um, some of this foliage down here all these trees and the big tree which is about here let's just put it on quite lightly first you might want to draw this out but just make sure that your actual um, pencil lines are smaller than the So make sure your actual pe uh, pencil lines are a lot smaller than the um, outline of the tree itself. Uh, right, let's see if we can get a nice effect. For these edges here, um, I do something like this. Just find a, a brush that makes, that makes a mark that you're happy with that looks like this sort of foliage of the trees. At the moment obviously it's not joined onto the side of the, the mountain but we can we can move this line that's not a that's really not a problem. Let me show you what I mean so with a fairly big brush. With a fairly big brush, we can pull that in. Can you see that needs to be a lot, a lot darker anyway? Maybe that can be less severe. So we want a hard edge, and we want to build this up because we want it fairly dark. You'll find that it won't go dark just in one pass. So. And then along, it's sort of along here, isn't it? So, like that. And then on this side, it's coming up more from about there. So this area is a little bit darker. Let's pull that up, and that's a bit more, bit more believable. You can see there's a little bit of light and dark on there. There's a little bit of texture, so it doesn't have to be totally flat, but it could do with being a lot darker than it is at the moment. So uh, anyway, let's give this another go. So this could be darker yet again. Mm -hmm. 
This is pretty much finished now. Um, you can leave it like that if you wanted to, but um, I think I might just warm it up. So I'm going to put a very, uh, very fine wash of quinacridone rose. Almost nothing there, very just like tinted water. Um, we don't really need to wet it first, but can you see that's just enough to tint the paper? and just to give it a little rosy hue. enjoy doing this one it's not easy but it's really good for your brush control skills I can't wait to see what you come up with so send them into the gallery and I'll see you next week oh in the meantime please like and subscribe